delve into the gripping lives of women tied to Nazi leaders, once powerful, now haunted by history. Witness Ava Braun's tragic romance and Emmy Goering's downfall, revealing loyalty, betrayal, and survival in the shadows of the Third Reich. Join us on a unique journey through the untold stories of World War II, exploring the lives of women connected to history's notorious figures. Uncover their involvement and relationships with the leaders, discovering captivating yet overlooked tales. Stay with us to explore their challenges, victories, and sacrifices. Uncover a fresh perspective on history that has remained hidden for a while. You won't want to miss the captivating and touching tales of these Nazi women. These amazing Nazi women seem to have a luxurious life as the wives and mistresses of Germany's leaders. They were seen as perfect women in Germany and had a lot of power. But what happened to these women and their children when their husbands and boyfriends lost their power in May 1945? How did the Allies handle them? We'll reveal the consequences of their once perceived perfect lives as these women grapple with the aftermath and face historical judgment. Let's get started with Hitler's wife, Eva Braun. Adolf Hitler, the notorious leader of Nazi Germany, had a hidden secret, his wife, Eva Braun. Hitler, one of history's most evil figures, caused dark chapters in human history. The depth of Eva's love for Hitler is genuinely shocking, especially considering her feelings of neglect from him. In an attempt to get his attention, she tried to end her life twice, surprisingly gaining more of his affection each time. Hitler kept their relationship a secret from most people during his rule, and it wasn't until after the war that the German public found out about it. Eva Braun was part of the inner circle of the Nazi leaders, but most Germans didn't know about her. She spent her time at Hitler's mountain retreat, where they had a love story in the beautiful Bavarian Alps. When the Allies were getting closer in April 1945, everything changed. Hitler realized the end of the Nazi regime and decided on a horrifying plan a suicide attempt with Eva Braun in an underground bunker in Berlin. They both took their lives by taking cyanide capsules. The news of their deaths shocked the world, ending the mysterious love story of Eva Braun, who had stayed hidden in the shadows for years alongside the man she loved. Hitler's sister-in-law, Gretel Braun Gretel Braun, Eva Braun's sister, had a challenging time during World War II. Hitler married Eva just before they both died. Gretel, part of Hitler's close circle, married Hermann Feiglein, an SS officer in 1944. Their wedding, held at Hitler's private house, happened just three days before the D-Day landings in Normandy. In January 1945, Gretel visited Berlin to see her husband, who worked in the Reich Chancellery. She returned to Obersalzburg in February. When Eva went back to Berlin alone to join Hitler in the bunker, Gretel stayed in Obersalzburg because she was pregnant. As Feiglein fled the bunker during the Battle of Berlin, Hitler's bodyguards captured him, subjecting Gretel to increasingly difficult circumstances. Alongside Heinrich Himmler's betrayal, Hitler condemned Feiglein to death, ultimately leading to his execution in the Reich Chancellery Garden despite Eva Braun's desperate pleas. Gretel gave birth to a girl on May 5, 1945, a week after Hitler and Eva's death. She named the baby Eva after her sister. Marguerite Himmler Marguerite Himmler, wife of Heinrich Himmler Heinrich Himmler, the head of the Nazi German secret police, was a late bloomer and quite reserved. He was known for being highly selective. Himmler crossed paths with his future wife Marguerite in 1927. She worked as a nurse and both shared a common interest in homeopathy and herbal medicine. They tied the knot in July 1928. Marguerite is seven years older than Himmler. They welcomed their only daughter Gudrun into the world in 1929. Later on, Himmler adopted a boy named Jihad. It's shocking how Himmler maintained a distant relationship with his wife despite his hectic schedule. Himmler spends much time with his daughter Gudrun, taking her to important events, including visits to places like the Buchenwald concentration camp. Himmler dated his secretary, Hedwig Potast, who was much younger but didn't marry her due to his high moral standards. They lived together and had two children, Helga and Nanit Donatia. Both Marguerite and Potast stayed loyal to Himmler even after the war, facing arrest by the American army. Gudrun, Himmler's daughter, supported her father strongly, while Marguerite tried to change her Nazi status but faced challenges. Gudrun later became known as the right-wing princess, supporting neo-Nazis. She passed away in 2018, while Marguerite died in 1967. In 1945, the American military detained Potast, and she subsequently relocated with her kids. She died in 1994. Gerda Buch Gerda Buch was Martin Bormann's wife. Like Himmler, Hitler's secretary, Martin Bormann was also not faithful to his words. He got married to Gerda Buch in 1929 when she was just 19. The couple had 10 children together. 
Her father was an essential member of the Nazi party, and she knew Hitler personally. Hitler and Rudolf Hess, the second in command of the Nazi party, were present as witnesses at their wedding. Gerda doesn't like Jewish people, but her marriage to Bormann is tough. He has not been faithful to her. Gerda, who is taller than Bormann, often feels embarrassed by him in front of others. However, in private, Bormann is caring and a bit anxious. Gerda supports the idea of parallel marriage, where men can have more children, so she was okay with Bormann having other relationships. One of Bormann's many mistresses is a movie star named Maya Balance, but they don't have any children together. At the end of the war, Bormann stayed in an underground bunker in Berlin after Hitler took his own life. He went missing during a breakout operation in early May. Gerda and her children lived in Wolkenstein, a village near Italy where the US Army arrested and questioned her. Later, she moved to Murano and found out she had uterine cancer. Sadly, she passed away in April 1946 at 37, and the fate of their 10 children varied after the war. Let's move on to Emmy Goering. Emmy Goering The most significant wife among the Nazi leaders was Emmy Goering, the second wife of Hermann Goering, who was the second leader of the Third Reich and Hitler's nominal successor. Emmy was once an actress, born in 1893. She got married to an actor, but they separated in a friendly way in 1926. In the early 1930s, she met Goering. Goering's first wife, Karen, was from Sweden. Unfortunately, Karen passed away from a heart attack in October 1931 before turning 43. Emmy and Goering got married in 1935, celebrating with a big wedding. They welcomed a daughter in 1938, and they named her Edda. Emmy was quickly known as the first elegant lady among the top leaders, enjoying her husband's luxurious lifestyle. Hermann Goering was one of the wealthiest men in Europe. He and his wife Emmy lived luxurious lives in mansions and castles filled with stolen artwork. After the war, Hermann was on trial, but he escaped execution. Emmy, being a strong supporter of the Nazis, got sentenced to a year in jail. She lost 30 properties and spent the rest of her life in a small flat in Munich. She passed away in 1973 at the age of 80. Unlike other Nazi leaders, Goering was loyal to his wife. As the war continued, Goering lost power because his air force couldn't stop the Allied bombings. He made a foolish move trying to replace Hitler and got arrested by the SS. They hurt Goering and his family before taking them to a villa. Goering thought he could talk to General Eisenhower to surrender Germany, but the US caught them in May 1945. Etta studied law and once tried to get compensation from the Bavarian government for her father's confiscated property but failed. Etta was firm in her belief that the Allies unfairly judged her father. She actively joined the neo-Nazi movement and attended numerous reunions. Etta, aged 80, passed away in 2018 and was buried in Munich. After the Nazi era, the stories of leaders' women reveal surprising tales of loyalty, betrayal, and survival. Think of Eva Braun's sad love story and Emmy Goering's downfall. These stories teach us about the complicated choices people make during war. Looking back at their lives helps us learn important lessons about history and how people navigate tough times. It's like opening a book and finding out about the ups and downs of real people during a challenging period. Their experiences give us insights into human nature, showing us that even in difficult times, people face tough decisions and make sacrifices that we can still learn from today.